Uh, how about an in the, new, in the news segment? Here's some good and bad news for us. Uh, the government uh, passed a mandate that said that uh, physicians have to do uh, trans transitions and abortions. Okay. Uh, in August, the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals came out and struck down the mandate. It was appealed and upheld, which means that if you have a doctor who is morally having a problem with transitioning someone from a boy to a girl or girl to a boy, or they have uh, personal beliefs against abortions, they are legally allowed to opt out of it. That just came out. So that was a win. Here's another one. Uh, a bunch of Catholics got together. Uh, the government said that they had to do the same thing. Okay? They sued and won. Uh, the government appealed and lost. So if you have a Catholic hospital, private hospital, Catholic university, that's who brought the lawsuit, and you do not want to participate for moral reasons in transitioning kids or abortions, that's also legal now. There was a second case a religious hospital, Sisters of St. Francis of Perpetual, Perpetual Adoration, and the Christian Medical Dental Association. They sued and won, and the Fifth Circuit also upheld their decision that you don't have to transition kids or do abortions if you have moral objection to it. So apparently the courts are starting to swing that direction as a freedom of choice concept. Translation, if you want that service, it's legal, but you just have to go to somebody who's willing to ethically and morally provide it. If someone object, objects to it, it's not a crime, and they're not required to do it. Essentially, it's what it's saying. Here's another one uh, in California, of course. AB 957, a bill is, uh, it hasn't gone to, uh, what's the governor's name? Newsom. 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 <laughs> it hasn't gone to his desk yet, but they said if, as soon as it gets there, he's going to sign it. Anyway, the uh, state of California is requiring family courts in uh disputes over children in divorces to take the child from the parents if they are not a gender affirming. So in California, you can lose your child over, uh, they have that in Minnesota? Not yet. Not yet, that was the operative term. Uh, now, it's a, uh, Bill 957, it's just about to go into law. It allows the courts to consider parents' affirmation of their child's gender identity when making decisions about visitation and custody. So if you have a divorce, this, is, this one's non-supportive, that isn't, this one is, the kids are gonna go to the is. And they can leg legally do it, okay? So the reason I mention that is because what happens in California usually hits there and then f comes east. So uh, I did a few radio shows recently on uh, uh, physician-assisted suicide and euthanasia. Uh, it was in uh, 2005, I think it was. Canada was considering a law to allow for euthanasia. 
And I said that in a few years, that'll trickle down here. And uh, sure enough, there's 12 states now that have physician-assisted suicide. In Canada, they just passed an addendum to that law that expands it to the mentally ill and the elderly, disabled. So in Canada, if you are mentally ill or elderly, the, the government can euthanize you like a pet. That's going to trickle down here. There are 12 states now in the United States that followed Oregon years ago that allows for physician-assisted suicide. There's 12 states. Oregon, Washington, and California have the most cases. Euthanasia, however, thank God, is not legal in the United States. That's covered under some homicide, federal homicide laws. You cannot put somebody to sleep like you can in Canada. That's considered murder here. Okay? But if you live in a state that has physician-assisted suicide, California, Oregon, Washington, they're the top three. New York, there's 12 total. You can petition to get permission to have yourself offed. And the Canadian law was based on finances because 20-25% of all their, you know, they have universal health care there. And 20-25% of all the medical costs in the, United, in the country of Canada was being spent on 6% of the population. Which 6% was that? Yeah. Right. <clears throat> the elderly, the mentally ill, and the terminally ill. So the theory behind it is the obvious. And they're right. The older you get, yeah. The more medical issues you have, your body starts falling apart, getting old sucks, and it costs more to get old, right? So their theory is, let's get rid of these people and save the, save the system. And if you got universal health care up there, that would make economic sense. So that, that's basically what they're doing. Uh, here's another good news, real quick. Are these boring, or do you find them interesting? No. Shall I stop doing these? No, very interesting. Keep doing them? Yeah. Okay. I just pick out the ones that have spiritual ramifications. I don't care about politics. I'm just, yeah. If it's related to something spiritual, then I'll include right. it every month, if that's okay. If you don't like them, I'll get rid of them. I don't care if you don't like them. We like them. Uh, two black guys walk into a Starbucks. And they just sit down. Um, that's a normal thing. Then they stay there. They don't order anything. That's normal around here. People go into a Starbucks. It's so hot out. Uh, they just sit there. They want to yik yak. Well, they'd been there for a few hours. And uh, the manager came up and said, listen, you guys have been sitting here for hours on end. You haven't bought anything. And. Uh, They said, no, we're not leaving. This is racism. No, it's not racism. I mean, you've been sitting, you're taking up a table. You've been here for hours. You haven't bought anything. Customers are coming in. They get into a dispute. They call the cops. The cops remove the two black guys. Uh, long, making a long story short. Uh, lawsuits, uh, public bad publicity, racism, everybody's race. Uh, Starbucks then jumps on the thing, uh, tries to PR it, and fires uh, some management people, uh, sacrificial white people. They fired them, higher-ups, to try to make, hey, and, and we're, yeah, it is, they shouldn't have done that. This is racism. We're sorry. You're all fired. They then sued Starbucks. <laughs> A jury in Camden, New Jersey, awarded uh, the manager, or the, 
not the manager of the store, but higher up, uh, $26 million Whoa. because they, she proved that they had, they fired her because she was white. <laughs> now that's an expensive espresso. <laughs> Those are, there must have been a lot of good stuff in that one. And uh, that's a short version of it. Um, the point is, spiritual, is that God is no respecter of persons, and we shouldn't be either. And in this ministry, we're 100% zero race around here. It doesn't matter what you are, we're praying for you, period. And demons don't have races. They just suck and they need to come out. But when you start firing people based on race, that's going to have a horrible fallout, even if it's white people. <laughs> I'm at the bottom of the barrel as a white male. <laughs> Above me in the trash can is a white female. If we are heterosexuals, we are under the barrel. So white male heterosexuals are, in our society now, trash. <laughs> On a bad note, uh, in Florida, the governor uh, tried to put a stop to uh, certain behavior around minors in schools. Mm -hmm. And they passed a law that you couldn't have drag shows, gender-affirming treatments, multi-use bathrooms, and so on, and pronouns. That had to stop uh, in state and school properties, okay? Uh, they, they sued uh, the state and so some federal judge overturned it. So they lost that one. Now you can't win them all. In Florida. In Florida. Not in Arizona. Florida. <clears throat> all right. Anybody here new? Wow. Okay. All right. Well, uh, I'll go through this again. <laughs> <laughs> now, we've watched your videos, so we know what it is. Oh, everybody knows what it is? We watched your videos. No, they knew we did. Oh, about seven people said, no, we haven't. Uh, that's why they call me lucky. Uh, now, this is a human being, and all human beings are built exactly the same. Everybody has five parts. Right? <laughs> and these are your five parts. One, two, three, four, and conscience, five. Each one of these parts works independently and collectively all at the same time. It's supernatural. Here is your intelligence and your free will. Okay? This is what drives people in the ministry nuts because they can't get the person's free will to line up with God's. Yeah. Drives you crazy. Yeah. <laughs> this is your spirit, man, where the Holy Spirit lives. All your gifts and fruit come out of there. Amen. This is the only part of you that's saved. Nothing else is saved. Here's your soul, the seat of your emotions. This is a nightmare on Elm Street. Yes. Oh, yes. Here's your conscience, the seat of your morality. After you get born again, the Holy Spirit moves into your spirit man. He tries to renovate all these things and heal here. Heal, renovate, renovate, renovate. That's the goal. This determines everything, not God. Okay? Calvinism is all false doctrines. It's all lies. Okay? Your mind, your free will determines God. God does not. Your life depends on what you decide is going to happen. If you want to get delivered today, you will be delivered. If you're holding back, 
you will not be delivered. If you want to be healed today, that's up to you. Nobody else. The devil is trying to take over your mind so he can control the rest of the person, and whoever gets the mind gets the rest of the person. The Holy Spirit wants your mind. He wants to control it, but only if you'll give it to him. He will not take it. The devil will take your mind and anything else he can get his hands on and will do anything in his power, legal or illegal, to take it. He'll do everything and anything to take your mind. As we mentioned a thousand times before, Wigglesworth used to have a flaming temper. He was a plumber. His IQ was high, but his academics were very low. Third grade graduate. His reading skills were next to nothing. Uh, physically, strong guy, kind of big bone guy, tough guy, physical laborer type person. Got filled with the Holy Ghost when he was uh, 40. 40. Okay. Uh, everything renovated. Temper gone, faith skyrocketing. His wife taught him to read, devoured the New Testament backwards and forwards. Praise God. <laughs> Made a decision of his own free will that the Holy Ghost would take him. And so he sacrificed his life and went almost all around the world, just about. What would have happened had he not decided to do that? He died a plumber, Bradsford, England. Nobody had ever heard of him. He buried somewhere. Who would know where? Who would care? Moral of that story. Why owe you? Why owe you? Have you got a, a large education? Anybody here got a couple doctor's degrees or anything? Nobody? Okay, good. Wigglesworth, third grade. <laughs> Anybody here? Rhodes Scholar, Giant IQ, Einstein? Uh, I don't see any. Wigglesworth? Okay. Oh, he was a male. He gets it. That's a crock of crap. Sister Edder. Right. Praise God. <laughs> Sister Edder must have had the greatest anointing any Americans ever had. Praise God. She was a woman. Hello? Yes. You know, the dead. <laughs> Praise God. Thank you, Lord. The dead, dead and the dying didn't care what sex she was. Right. She decided like Wigglesworth did, that she would hand over her life to the Lord. Take anything you want. Wow. Was she good looking? Hot, hot body? Bootalicious? Popular? Racks of friends. Was she something? A nobody. Praise Wait a minute, a nobody. Jesus. 
And nobody seems to be perfect for God. Amen. What does that mean? Why owe you? You can completely change your life. Crazy. Unstoppable. <clears throat> do most Christians do that? No, 99%. They live a here, out of their soul. Their Christian life stinks because their emotions rule them instead of their spirit. They become carnal Christians, you know. What's the purpose of the Saturday meeting every month? Transfer over here. I encourage you to transfer over here. Make your move over there. Let's go. I'm going here. Well, you don't understand, I'm not intelligent, I'm not good-looking, and I'm not wealthy. You're not, really. Catherine Coleman had nothing. She looked like somebody dug her up. She decided. Take what you want. There's nothing the devil can do to stop it. Once Amen. you decide, Amen. he cannot control your mind. Praise God. <clears throat> Who am I? Who are you? I just told you. You're, are you a nothing? Perfect. Make your decision. Go here. I don't understand, Mike. I don't have any friends. I'm fat. I'm stupid. I'm ugly. You're, oh, really? Perfect for God. Not perfect for GQ. Not perfect for TV. No, none of that stuff matters. This is the only thing that matters. You make that decision and nobody and nothing can stop you. I'm too old. Really? 40 Wigglesworth got filled with the Spirit at 40. <clears throat> Your parents losers? Are they? <laughs> really? Perfect. Perfect for God. Perfect. So every month I try and encourage people. Let's go. Amen. It can't be stopped. Nobody can stop him. But the Holy Ghost, gosh, he will not take stuff. He wants to be given stuff. He won't just take it. <clears throat> if you don't give him permission, he's not going to do nothing. You don't even have to talk to the devil. He'll do everything behind your back, under your back, stab you in the back. Anything goes with him to destroy you. Not the Holy Ghost. He will not do it. He's looking for volunteers. That's why you came here today. Praise God. No one would come and see me if they weren't serious. About it. There would be no reason to come see me. All right, so remember that guy? Well, you don't, you're older. But anyway, Snidely, uh, Snidely had a lot of sarcasm. And uh, I grew up learning sarcasm. Is that spelled right? Uh -huh. yeah. Sarcasm? It doesn't look right for some reason. Is it spelled right? Yes. All right. I knew that. I was testing you. <laughs> I do that a lot, test people. Snidely 
and me had a lot of sarcasm. What happens is when you grow up uh, in a bad family, my parents were drunks, uh, you start to develop a, a automatic reactions to things. Okay? And then when you get into adulthood, uh, that, that just carries over. And uh, when you're around your family or friends or people you know well or spouses, it gets really bad because your filter kind of dissipates. You don't have a filter anymore, so it just pops out, you know. So this and this happens. That figures. Oh, she did this and it, oh, I know. Well, your son did, your wife did, oh, that, again? And it just pops out. You don't even think about it. it. Just comes right out. It's like instantaneous. Comes right out of your mind. And that's uh, somebody who is programmed to respond negatively, spontaneously. I do that with my dad. You know, uh, oh, dad's deal fell apart. We lost a bunch of this. All the money's gone. Uh, they drank up all this, you know, over and over again. As you're, as you're conditioned with negativity, you, well, that figures, oh, well, that's dad again. He's just, you know. And it just comes out. It, nobody asks you. It just falls out. Oh, he'll do it. Oh, he took the car. Oh, he'll probably he'll probably wreck. It just falls out. And the person that's dropping these little sarcasm bombs. They don't hear it, but the other person hears it, and they're offended. They think you're trashing them, criticizing them, running them down, rejecting them, backstabbing them. Are you thinking right now? Yeah. Oh, that figures. It just came out. You don't even think about it. It's an instantaneous mind default. Click. Your brother's coming for Thanksgiving. Oh, God. He's bringing the kids. It just came out. You know, his kids are psychos. And you go, oh, he's, he's probably bringing the kids. Oh, God, we better reinforce it. It just falls out instantaneously. It's a preconditioned. Your mind can be conditioned to replay things in a certain way. And it's based on, on wounds and frustrations in your soul. It's just manifesting that way. Why am I saying that? When this thing explodes, what? You did what? Okay, that's easy to interpret, and it's easy to fix if you're looking for it. Oh my God, I got an anger problem. I got a rage problem. See that? That was easy to pick up. You don't need a PhD in psychiatry. To... My God, there's a problem there. This, nobody picks up. Because it's a preconditioned mental response. And it's so subtle, it just falls out. Hey, let's invite so-and-so over. Oh, God, drama. It just falls out instantly. Comes out. See that? It's preconditioned, a mental response. Long-term conditioning. Disappointed in that person. Oh God, they're gonna, she'll fall apart, she'll start crying, she'll be telling us about the last time her, her date turned into another date rape, and there it goes. 
fun. And it all starts after saying, well, you want to invite Brenda to the birthday party? Click, 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 and instantaneously, boom, it comes out. So now when you're helping somebody and you're counseling them, you have to listen to every single word they say. Every little word. You got to listen to it. Because they're telling you something with just subtle little things. Subtle things. Little things. Big things. You don't need to be a counselor to catch those. Somebody blowing up, that's easy to catch. That's right in your face. Okay? It's, a, it's a subtle, preconditioned negativity. Did you meet Bob? Yeah, I met him. Yeah. Yeah. Do you try and do you try and do you try and get you into bed? Do you try and get your pants off? It just automatically comes out. Oh, no emotion behind it. Nothing. It's just disappointment with that person's sexual behavior in the past popped right out of their mind. Oh, there it was. Just heard their name. Nothing. Well, if you're married or you're with your sister or your brother or somebody, you doing these things, you don't notice, but they notice it. So they interpret it negatively. Like you don't like them or you are rejecting them or you are criticizing them or you're superior to them or you're knocking them down or you're beating them under. They get offended at you. And you're sitting there going, I don't, what? What did I say? Hey, come back here, what did I say? And they really don't know what they said. It's just a conditioned mental response that flops out and the person doesn't know they should have bit their tongue. So when you were a sinner and you had that conditioning, that carries over into your born-again Christian life if you get saved. And that's why there's so many negative Christians. Okay, Twelve spies go out, right? They see adversity. They, Twelve come back. Two of them didn't respond like they, the normal person would. They said, hey, wait a minute, the Holy Ghost, Nephilim's no problem for him. The other ten blurted it out to Moses. And as you remember in the story, their, their job wasn't to come back and give Moses advice they were told to go there and report their observations. They were told to come back and say, hey, Moses, check it out. We got Nephilim there. We got crops there. We got foreigners there. We got land there. Here's how the land is. Here, here are the facts. Moses, you're the boss. Here's the facts. You decide. They came back and went into a, their default system in their mind. We can't do this. They're too big for us. We look like grasshoppers. We suck. Moses didn't ask them what they looked like compared to Nephilim. He didn't want any information other than there's Nephilim there. That's all he wanted to know. 
He didn't want your interpretation of a Nephilim. He knows about Nephilim. He doesn't need you to explain it to him. Well, the problem was the Holy Ghost heard all that. And they were gone how many days? 40. And they lost how many years? 40. They lost one year per day they were over there. Four of the years. They were stuck out in the wilderness. Yeah. And what's happening now? You're doing the same thing. Only God's not doing that anymore, but you're doing it. You're wasting all these years with this mindset that you were programmed to go into as a child that was negative. So if you have a rotten family tree, it's chronic negativity. And then when you go into your Christian life, later on you get saved, it carries over and you become a Christian that carries a lot of unbelief and doubt around. Okay? Which does what? Blows your Christian life. It's over, man. Screwed. Instead of Sister Adder here, we got Missy, nobody. Who's hurt the most? Father's hurt the most. He wants a Sister Edder here, there. He don't want a Missy, nobody, there, there. He don't like that. I said all that to say this, if you have that conditioned negative response, blah, and somebody goes, why'd you say that? Why'd I say what? Why'd you say this? Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I did say that, didn't I? It just comes out. Does this make any sense? Yes. Your mind's conditioned to have an have a instantaneous response to your environment. And if you've been conditioned negatively, you know, like you grew up in a, a kooky family, then you had your mind kooked out, so to speak. That's a medical term. And uh, that'll carry over into your Christian life, where it's really dangerous. I just got an email today from a guy stuck in Ahwatukee. His van broke down. He's been living out of his van. He's a born-again Christian. And he says to me in the email, I just don't understand why nothing works out for me. I just got it this morning from him. So I told him to go to the Dream Center and start there. But the point I'm making, he has this. You, you follow that? So if I say, if I say it, thought. The demons heard me say it, and therefore it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. Mm -hmm. Therefore they heard it, and so they bless it. Oh. They put their anointing on it. Oh. Wow. Wow. And so now, I, a I am a suck. Because mm -hmm. I said I was. Oh. You follow? New Year's resolutions, why don't they work? Ah, I just told you, the mind's already conditioned. You have a conditioned response that a casual resolution is not going to break. This is spiritual. This is, this is spiritual. This is a war. Well, I'm going to lose some weight this year. Why don't you try Jenny Craig for the 10th time? Oh, that'll work. Not. Why won't it work? Ah, oh, I just told it. This, this is a conditioned response to food, to anxiety resolution, eating for comfort. Jenny Craig's not going to fix this. Hello? <laughs> Tony Robbins knows a little bit of this. 
And he's right, it does work. If he pounds enough crap into your mind, you'll change a few things in your life and start thinking differently, right. okay? But again, uh, that's a small percent of people that get Tony Robbinized because A, they're already strong people to begin with and B, they have high motivation, see? So they're going to get something out of Tony Robbins. He's got a lot of good mental tricks, stuff he teaches you, okay? He's got a huge mind, a super-powered mind, and huge motivation. Big, strong, powerful human being, right? Okay, that's got nothing to do with us. This is, I'm talking about regular people, not people that are super motivated, got lots of money. Tony don't sell cheap. Okay, those, those things are thousands and thousands of dollars. Goes to Tony Robbins. Okay, Holy Ghost free. Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. This is spiritual war. That's right. But you're not going to be able to stop this unless you break this instantaneous pattern of response. I told you the story about Jimmy Swagger. Okay, so him and Jerry Lee Lewis, his cousin, used to sneak over to the honky talk when they were kids, grade school, and stare at the dancing girls, right? And they picked up lust demons. So they had this mindset of looking at naked women's bodies, hot bodies. They were trained, they trained themselves to lustful passions in their bodies, ex exercised by their mind, to develop visual lust. Okay? Everybody at Highlighter and all these clubs has that system. Right? They, they, that's how they have been, their mind has been programmed to be stimulated visually. Oh, like that. Okay, so that uh, demonic pattern destroyed half of their careers. Jerry Lee Lewis started sleeping with his 12-year-old cousin. They got, then they got married. Then the press found out about it. He went from here, Elvis was here, Jerry Lee was here, he went from there to there. Jimmy Swagger blew up twice. What was he doing? Voyeurism. He wanted prostitutes to dance for him. And this chick dancing for him here at 55 was similar to the honky-tonk peeking in the back when he was in grade school, same demons. See that? Jimmy, Jimmy. So anytime somebody walked by Jerry or Jimmy, he would look. There's a booty. There's a hot babe. There's a good one. They were programmed because he went in at seventh grade, fifth grade, peeking at the girls in the back. You see that? Swaggart wasn't sleeping with horse. He was. They, he'd, he'd have them dance for him and you know that stuff in private. He wouldn't go to a club. Well, Jerry Lee was worse. He picked up worse demons. He had major lust demons. He had, how many wives he have? Six? Five. He just died here recently. He died last, last year, right? This year. Yeah, Jerry Lee died this year. He was the greatest piano player I ever saw. I never saw anybody play the piano like him. Have you? I saw him playing the piano one time when it was on fire. Yeah. How do you do that? But anyway, this guy's lust just overran him. 
It was awful. So when you're helping somebody and they say something odd, I don't think so. Oh, you caught it. I, did you hear what you said? I don't think so. See, and I'll now repeat it back to them. Just five minutes ago, you said, I don't think so. Okay? That makes them have to own it. See? That way I'm not accusing them of something when you're counseling. If you don't have the exact facts, They'll, the demons will go, oh, they're accusing you, you're being attacked. Oh, no, excuse me. You said, and I quote, I don't think so when I was talking about healing, deliverance, what have you. See that? You have to remember and listen carefully. You have to be a good listener to help somebody. <laughs> okay. I don't know if they listen much in Minnesota, but when you move down here, you got to start listening. <laughs> and... You give them a quote. This is what you said. Now there's a reason you said that. Let's find out what that reason is. Do you love your husband? Oh, not really. Oh, <laughs> not really. Okay, you said not really. Now wait a minute here. I heard exactly what you said. Well, no, I, what I meant was, no, excuse me. You said exactly. Five, two minutes ago, I heard you, and this is what you said. Not really. When you throw a really into a sentence, that alters a sentence. Yeah. And what's coming out of the heart. It alters. It's a different perspective. Correct? Well, that not really there was, could be a conditioned response the person used over the years while they were being verbally abused as a kid by their mother or something. Well, I, I did it. Oh, I kind of did it. I, and they, they learned to make statements but leave themselves little outs. Yeah, and the whole time you're talking to them, you're getting so frustrated because they won't just answer the question straight on. It's like one of these stinking politicians. Every time you ask them a question, they never answer it. Have you ever noticed that? They never answer one question. <laughs> and so you grow up like that when somebody's accusing you, criticizing you, pointing a finger at you, p blaming you. No, they did it. He did it. So you learn, you learn to leave yourself out, little outs. See? And um, that skill is enormously uh, necessary when you get married. But anyway, what it is is. You learn to try to get out of stuff. Did you take the trash out? Uh, oh, no, wait a minute. I just heard an ah. Uh. <laughs> See, some people use ah uh in their answers all the time. Have you ever noticed that? Have you ever been around an uh or? <laughs> okay, they're telling you something with an uh. means a lot. And then you find out how the person was raised. Somebody putting their thumb on them, somebody trying to control them, someone, someone criticizing them, pointing a finger at them. Oh, no, wait a minute, this is starting to add up here. Your mother created a walking, uh, uh. See? And you can trail it back. And ah, led to a beautiful deliverance from somebody's demons from their mom. You with me? Yeah. We do. See that? Yes, sir. Every, I think everything people say, not a, everything me, basically means something, you know. Now, of course, I'm talking about normal people. I'm not talking about people who are severely mentally ill. That's a totally different thing. 
they say all kinds of things that mean nothing, but I'm talking about a regular person. Almost everything they say means something. Bill, you got a minute? <clears throat> Whoa. Bill might have been raised as a throat clearer. <laughs> what is a throat clearer? It's a person who's scared, giving himself another second or two or three to prepare for the worst. Bob, can you help me with this thing? <clears throat> uh, oh, a, a throat clearer with an uh? Uh-oh. No way is that guy coming over to help. He's got something to do. I, I can do it later, but right now I got to. He cooks up a story. Feed Martians. You know, they'll make something up. What's that telling you? Avoidance, fears, irresponsible, scared. Sorry. Why are they scared? What well, could be fear of screwing up, fear of being criticized? You, as a minister to them, you've got to listen to what they're saying and pull that out of them. Jen, see that? But you can't help someone if you're not listening to them. And it has to be little things. <coughs> Well, that's, that could have been a long 10 years of their childhood, you just heard. <clears throat> right, trying to escape, trying to get away, trying to avoid, oh God. Yeah, what are they going to ask me to do now? Yeah. Some kids are uh, raised with, you know, uh, mothers who don't want to discipline. And it's... When your dad gets home, you're going to set, they're going to fix this when your dad gets home. Well, the dad gets home, and he don't want to come home anymore. So he starts hitting the happy hours. Because he doesn't want to come home and have to discipline something he had nothing to do with. And then the kid is being conditioned, mentally and emotionally, to when they see an authoritative male, to, ooh, ugh. What happens to that family? Well, later on, kid grows up, he leaves the dad and has no respect for the mother. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. To these instantaneously negative responses, also come out in facial expressions as well as body language. Okay. All the time. All the time. As well as in writing. Any way they can express it. <laughs> because I'm always getting blocked. <laughs> Any, she's always getting blocked. Now, did you hear that? Did you hear what she said? <laughs> She's always getting blocked. Oh my goodness, thank you, ma'am. She just offered herself up as a sacrificial lamb to the monthly deliverance center meeting. She just laid down on the altar, and I, I'm Abraham. And nobody's coming to save her. Now, she said that for a reason. If I went back there, I would find a big old mess with that gal right there. What's your name? Terry. Terry, yeah. Terry uh, grew up with lots of pain here, but had a powerful conversion. Amen. Didn't you, hon? Yes, I died in two minutes. Yeah, and then, then now she's, she's hardcore over to Jesus, right? Amen. Yeah, but she's got this crap. She's got crap in there from... <laughs> How did you figure all that out? I just heard her. What did you say? I'm always getting blocked. I'm always getting blocked by what I put on Facebook. Now, Christians. of course she is. Now, uh, somebody else answered me. Oh, me. 
You did. Now, what's your name? Eva. Eva, you're on the altar. <laughs> did you hear Eva answer that question instead of her? Did you hear her? No. Huh? Yes. Okay. Who's thinking? Nobody? Oh, man. There was a reason she answered that question for her. What did she say? You didn't hear her? No. All right, now there's a reason this lady here doesn't <laughs> listen. He was talking. That's right. It was me. Oh. Did you see that? She blamed him. Lisa, but... Are you listening? Did you hear that? My God. There's a reason he accepted the blame that wasn't his. Did you hear her? Is anybody following this meeting? This is rich. Everything the person says means something. Jen? Even the dog? Well, now that's a special intervention. <laughs> that's spiritual. Now, everything they said meant something. He's accepting blame for something that clearly wasn't his fault. But he voluntarily throws himself under the bus. So you, when you're ministering to people like him, you find out why they did that. Because there's a reason people throw themselves under the bus. See? And again, it's, it's a preconditioned pattern. See? So when I asked her what she said, I was testing her because I was going to go a different direction, but I wanted to see if she remembered what she said. See? But Miss Organ Pipe back there <laughs> is too impatient to wait for her to answer, and then we'll dig back in her past and see. Ugh. Isn't anybody going to get this job done? Isn't this going to get finished? When are they going to help me? What's happening? Are they going to call back? What's going on? Praise God. Right, honey? Oh, yeah. yeah. Hear that? Mm -hmm. You didn't hear it. I know you didn't hear it. No. <laughs> so when you're ministering to people, everything they say means something. And if you don't pick up on it, you're not going to be able to help them. You're going to miss it. You can't get on a boat that passes you in the harbor. You've got to stand there and wait for the next one. And sometimes you don't get a next one. Is this helping anybody? <laughs> now, I'm not trying to teach psychology here. This is spiritual. I'm trying to show how the soul works, how the mind can be conditioned by demons from childhood. See that? Doormat people are conditioned from childhood. See? Right? Did your, did your parents fight as kids? Shut up, you biatch. You dirty. Do you stop? Daddy, daddy, I'll do it. Mom, I'll do it. I'll fit. And the child dumps themselves. Just try and stop that. See? So then later on they get saved. Ah, doormat thing. Pretty soon they're involved in 50 ministries. They, they have a nervous breakdown. They're going nuts because they want to help and please everybody. Stop. That's not your ministry in life. Please everybody. People pleasers are not ministers. They're servants of 
spirits. All these things we've been discussing are things the Holy Spirit removes from the soul over time as you recognize it, repent of it, remove it. You know, that's why deliverance is kind of a process. Because nobody gets fixed it instantly. It's not going to happen. It could happen in your body. Boom, the cancer is gone. But this, much more complicated than your body. The body is, is easy, easy pickings for the Holy Ghost. Boom, you're healed. But this takes free will. That's different. See that? <coughs> Doormat people like him are in a delusion when God sees them as road warriors, total victors. That's how he sees them. But they see themselves as, maybe I could fix this by dumping myself. I'll give you the money. I'll, pay. I'll fix that. I'll go get it. I'm being a good Christian. No, what's happening is you're just following your childhood pain, being a human doormat. Are you a that figures type person? You have that? That's a red flag. Uh, something needs to be healed here. Now, if you carried all this to a further extreme, you can see how people develop chronic paranoia. And you keep pushing that way, and they go into delusions, alternate realities beyond that, multiple personalities beyond that. But it all starts here. You got to start somewhere. And the devil usually starts some, something simple, something easy thought, a feeling, and repeat it. And then it's conditioned becomes a habit. But the number one thing we usually run into is self-deprecation, self-rejection here. Because there's so many dysfunctional families in America. Most people, like me, grew up in a jacked up home. So I, I just had a sense I was trash. And so I developed sarcasm. That figures. Oh, they won't work. He won't show up. They'll leave. And as soon as I kept saying that, they never showed up. They, didn't, they left. The demons go, oh, really? Thank you for authorizing us to f damn you with that statement. And we're happy to do it. And we're able to do it. Because right. they have that kind of power. Because you gave it to them. Yeah, you know, and you never 100% overcome it. I haven't. But in some people, it's so damaging they can't function. Long-term marriages, oh, terrible. <laughs> Completely programmed, just, oh, all the time, bang. That ain't gonna work, they won't show up. He'll, he'll, he'll forget, he forgot. This is all prophetic. This is before they do it. Oh, it's another conspiracy. Oh, God. You know, he'll come up with Martians next. And it just falls out. And you say, what did you just say? I didn't say nothing. No, you just said something. 
it just comes out. And the other person that's wound, has a wounded soul will go, well, oh, that kind of hurts. You know, you just insulted me. You don't like me. This making any sense? Amen. Yeah. This is the nuts and bolts of what these spirits do. They train people on how to think, to respond to their environment. Okay. Yeah. When you go into the delusional part, um, is yep. that when a person is mentally ill? Because at one point I was diagnosed with schizophrenia and spent like two months in a mental institution, but it was demonic for me. You know, but the, the demons altered my mind like I was on some type of drug, like acid. And I know that because I tried acid before. And they would give me delusions where I would see my mouth like two inches in front of my face for a whole year. So I didn't smile for a whole year. Um, I went at the apex. I, it was like I heard, it was as if I had five radio stations in my head at one time because of the demonic activity and, and like the shadows and the visions that they showed me. And, and I had the third eye. And, and they give me sensations like a hole in the back of my head, the size of a golf ball with smoke coming out. Just weird stuff they did to my mind. Yeah, I know. When God did heal my mind. It was like it, it came back into focus like binoculars. You just, wow. How did he do it? So there was a pastor that had been counseling me, and he prophesied Sunday. He, he was like, you're going to get your mind back. And I was like, oh, whatever. It, it, was, it was. I had short-term memory loss for like five years. And so I, I really didn't believe it. Um, and so um, that was on a Sunday. And then, because um, I was so bad that I would walk into a room, I wouldn't know what to do with my eyes, my hands, or anything. So I would just watch a person, like this young lady here, uh, fold my arms like her, fold my legs like her, and just watch the clock for 10 minutes, because I didn't know what to do. And then, you know, after 10 minutes, I'd find somebody else in the room, and I would mimic them. That's how I survived. And so, anyway, he, he predicted I was going to, or prophesied I was going to get my mind back. And so, um, that was on a Sunday. And then Wednesday night, walking out of the Bible study, I stepped really hard down on the cement as I was walking out the door. And my mind just, you know, it kind of scared me. And my mind just went back into focus like binoculars. It was like, God healed me that way. Wow. Just like that? Yeah. Praise God. And do you ever have another delusion? Um, I can feel them coming back. Um, you know, like my husband died four years ago, mm -hmm. the short term memory tried to come back, and um, but I'm able to resist it, you know, more as I get stronger. But mm -hmm. it, not like it was before. Before it was like I was being pulled out of my body. I would wake up, you know, at the corner of my bed and just see my body, uh, my body laying on the bed breathing. I knew it was my body because I recognized the breathing pattern. So I mean, um, it's not like I was before. But the only way I could describe the Schizophrenia is, and I would smell sound, I would smell, sorry, I would smell scents like rotten sausages. The only way I can describe it was like being on acid, because when I was a teenager, I did acid. Mm -hmm. And that's how they took my mind, they altered it, mm -hmm. just like that. Those demonic spirits altered my mind, just like alcohol would alter my mind, or uh, a strong drug. Did it start in your 20s? Um, no, it probably started in high school. By the time I was 19, 19. I, I had given up. And before that, were you ever involved in any kind of spiritual activity? Yeah, palm readers. Palm readers, I yeah. Palm readers. And did you, either your parents involved in spiritual things? Um, I'm a granddaughter of a Native American chief. Okay. And, and then also I allowed a, a lady come into my house who was a daughter of a witch and uh, from Mexico, the Aztecs. Yeah. And when she left that night, something jumped on me. And then I, I started having third eye visions. and. The demons they hid for like 10 years, they really didn't manifest until I was a student at Oropus University, and they were confronted with the anointing. Then they started to manifest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now that, that's a typical story there. I've heard that hundreds of times, what she just said. They operate in the same pattern. The foundation is spiritualism, some kind of spiritualism. Mm -hmm. Yeah, up in the family tree, there's somebody involved in witchcraft, sorcery, masonry, uh, weird spiritual stuff. Mm -hmm. Then those spirits get in the family tree and then they start going down looking for abuse victims. Usually the kids are abused verbally a lot. And then they 
the other demons eventually let in the schizophrenia demon. She had many demons before she had schizophrenia. She already had a rack of demons before she had schizophrenia. They let him in. And then he takes over the rest of the spirits. Yeah? And that's for all mental illness or just schizophrenia? What do you say? For all mental illness or just schizophrenia? Like how you're saying um, schizophrenia, there's witchcraft at the bottom of it. It goes deep back. Yeah, kind of an opening door thing. Witchcraft, open door thing. Yeah, that lets the schizophrenia demon in, usually. He said but the all person, mental illness. Does, all does that mental apply illness? to other No, uh, No, not all mental illness, no. But um, the other demons she had before that, rejection, fear, that kind of, they, they were pushing her toward that spirit. And that, that was the one they wanted in. They wanted him in, because then he, he dominates the rest. And he takes over the person's mind. Yeah. What about depression now? Like I, you keep hearing that all these kids are depressed, depressed, but like it's all over the media. It's all over. You just keep hearing it, and people are manifesting it. Yeah. Now that's the spirit of heaviness. It comes out of the book of Isaiah, and the kids are picking it up. Not only uh, depression, but fear, fear demons, and they come in through social media and games and computers and. Warcraft, uh, Facebook, Instagram, everything, I mean, they get in that way. And then they, then they develop clinical depression. It's running rampant right now. I'm, I'm hearing from Christian parents saying, like, oh, I'm scared he's going to kill himself. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the fear demon got in. The fear of spirits gets in through these instruments. And then they talk to the kid and then kill themselves. Yeah, it's happening all over the country. Same demons, yeah. Can you deliver someone who doesn't think they need to be delivered? Like they're not normally. No, not normally. No. No, God's people perish for lack of... God. Yeah, and that person doesn't understand how spirits work, how they get in. And uh, out in Jesus' name, split the com Christian world in half. Boom. Like that. And then the fight started. Boop. Christians can't have demons. Christians are possessed. Chris, oh, the whole thing. It's a big mess. But going back to an old radio show, uh, God showed me there was going to be a deliverance revival in America. I think it was uh, 2004 or five, set, no, six or seven I did that show. And, uh, but he also showed me it was going to go like this. Nothing. So it's going to phase through us nationwide like a fad. And the fun is going to go out of it. The money is going to go out of it. The CDs, the books and everything are going to all be bought up. And then it's going to tank. And then we'll go back to the normal thing, uh, who's going to be left? Us. Okay? I was, <laughs> we were here before the deliverance revival, and we'll be here when it's gone. Okay? It's, it's a fad right now. It's going to fizzle out. Right? Yeah. Of course it is. And healing, remember? Nobody remember that? Well, if you're old, you will. <laughs> Back in the 40s and 50s, nationwide, what was it? Healing revival all across the country. And they all came out of everywhere. They were all over the country, just like these deliverance ministers are. <laughs> They're all over the place. Everybody's an expert on deliverance. It's, I mean, it's embarrassing. If you buy that Hammond book, Pigs in the Parlor, in, in the bookstore there, you have more knowledge than the cumulative knowledge of 25 deliverance ministers on YouTube. If you added up all their knowledge, you'd beat them out if you bought that one book and read it. Not including Gary Prince's book, 
Prince's book, They Shall Expel Demons. If you read that one and the other one, you'd know more about deliverance than any minister in the United States. <laughs> it's a fad, okay? It's a fad. Yeah. Can you annoy your house to protect it from demons? Nah, not normally. It's possible. But uh, if you have demons in your home or poltergeists or something like that, uh, they're not going to leave until the person living there gets delivered. So I get ghost calls all the time. Can you come over and anoint my house? No. <laughs> Can you come in here and get those things out of you? Because demons in a home are easy to get rid of. They'll just fly out the door. But not with somebody who's heavily infected. They won't leave. They know better. Huh? Didn't you watch Amityville Horror? Yeah. You didn't watch that? No. Oh. Amityville Horror. Another old. There's so many advantages of being old. I tell my wife that all the time. What it was, was uh, this family got murdered in the house. You know that, right? Yeah. Anybody know this? Yeah. Well, anyway, if something like that happens in a home, the demons have legal rights to have that home. And they keep that home permanently. Okay, so if you buy the home, and in fact, uh, I believe four other imbeciles have bought that house. Yeah since that movie came out, four other people, spiritually ignorant, who know nothing about the spirit world, bought that house. Wow. And, geez. Demons don't sign leases. If they own the place, they don't leave, okay? Unless a believer gets delivered and goes in there and blows them out, and then they're gone. But at the Amityville, you remember, um, a Catholic priest came in, he got beat up. Uh, everybody came in to anoint the house. They got their butts kicked. Wow. Nobody in the family ever got delivered. They were all loaded with demons, okay? So none of that stuff works. You know, the Catholic stuff is fun. There's a cross for you. There's, you like that? That's fun to do. Not gonna work. It's not working. That's not like I said. We'll be here when this is over. Amen. Right here, and then God. down here is we're trying to give people basic truths here, not sell a bunch of hype. Okay. I can't remember. So Amityville, the one in Long Island, New York. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, 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 that was a real deal. That was the real deal. Of course, it was embellished for the movie, like they do everything else, but the basics of that thing, that was 100% real. They, those kids did get, that family did get murdered in that house. That kid shot his family to death. And that's when they came in. They took that place. And you're not going to go over there and anoint the house unless you want to get your face kicked in. And I'm sure a bunch of Christians did it. Christians are some of the dumbest people you'll ever meet. Because they think they have this blanket coverage. See? And they do not. You do not, because you, you have the blood of Christ, you do not have blanket coverage to go anywhere you want to go and do anything you want to do you're going to get butchered. you got to be called to go do something, not just walk into a shrine in yep. Tokyo. You're going to walk out of there in big trouble. Yeah. And the last place you want to go to is Jerusalem. That's the most infected, demonized city on the planet. Wow. Everybody is in Jerusalem. Wow. Catholics, Muslims, Orthodox, everything's there. But we need to get on a tour bus and go to Jerusalem. <laughs> Everybody, half the people come back and tell them, hey, I heard weird stuff in the hotel that night. 
stuff knocking on the walls. I felt something. Everybody's got a weird story. Do not go to Jerusalem. Okay? You're asking for it. The devil runs that place, lock, stock, and barrel. Okay? So demons, poltergeists are real. Yeah, but anointing homes, <laughs> no, we don't do that here. I, I, you know, I'm kind of lying. If I find somebody I don't like, I'll send them over there. To <laughs> oh, hi, baby. I'm almost done. Yeah. Yeah, can you f ask her what she wants? Tell Karen, okay? Tell Karen. I'll answer it. I'll answer it. I'm... Mike? What person? What person? In here. In here. In planning. planning on going to Jerusalem? Yeah, that is. No one. No, no one. Too expensive. <laughs> I didn't even get to that. I didn't even get to the expense of it. I'm sorry I left that out. Thanks, hon. All right. Now that's enough, Johnny Carson. All right. Now, uh, did everybody get a copy of this uh, itinerary to Jerusalem? Tell her, sure, sure. Okay, now what I was just teaching you, these things in Galatians, these things in Galatians, most of these co coming out of here. Okay? Most of these are coming out of here. The ones at the bottom are coming out of here. See that? Everybody get a copy of this? Yeah. Okay. Paul, brilliantly. I mean, brilliantly. Awesome. Broke it down in, in this chapter. Amazing. Here's the 17 here, basically. There's the 9 there. And okay. So, uh, When you go down the nine, here, if you don't have these attributes in your spirit, man, bingo, you need deliverance. Something's blocking it, like you plug a wine bottle with a cork. Yeah. It's a self-auditing system. There's nine of them right here. See that? Now, nobody who wants, who sees themselves as a doormat is going to have consistent peace in life, right? So that will be easy to catch. Nobody who's impatient with people and answers their questions for them and doesn't understand why people don't get going, they're not going to have peace all the time. They're going to have anxiety. See that? They, they, Praise God. See how that audits? Yeah. It's a perfect Holy Ghost auditing system. It's utterly amazing. This is tr a tremendous sheet to hold for your counseling sessions. And you just audit the person and the deficits that you discover in them, or they reveal to you voluntarily, you can see where what needs to be fixed. It's brilliant. Holy Ghost brilliant. Right? It's amazing. It is amazing. Now these other ones, they're all connected to these three. Bang, boom, bing, bang. 
Okay, people doing these things have a seared conscience. Many of these things, hatred, variance, come out of the soul. Many of these are sins that are stimulated by the mind. See that? 17 of them. Perfect blueprint for Romania. You take this to Romania. You sit every one of them Romanians down, right? And before you sit them down, you give them a kick in the fanny. Because Romanians need a kick in the fanny. <laughs> then you sit them down and then you audit them. Why did you come? What's your problem? Well, it's, you're going to see this no matter what they say. This is going to be there somewhere. There's a lack of the Holy Ghost manifestations. Right? So someone that doesn't have joy would have depression occasionally, wouldn't they? And the Spirit of the Lord wants that out of there, doesn't it? Yes. Somebody that had rejection wouldn't have peace and joy, would they? But God would want to fix that in a person that didn't. Right, sweetheart? Praise God. Yeah, he's been hunting for you. There it is. People who are, don't have meekness. Arrogant people. Loud mouths, know-it-alls, Bible thumpers. God said this. Oh, what a disaster a Bible thumper is. <laughs> Have you ever met somebody that's got a lot of Bible knowledge but can't do one cotton-picking thing for somebody? Has no spiritual power at all but can quote something? It's embarrassing. It would be better just to have a couple of scriptures in your heart and then go heal. Well, so that's a holy goat. And of course, the, the number one gift is the bottom one. Right. That's the tenth gift of the Spirit, Paul outlined in Corinthians. He went through the nine and then he saved the big one for last, which is agape, unconditional love. Okay? Right? <clears throat> and you can't have any of these things if you've got this demonic mindset of programmed responses, and chronic negativity. Negative emotions. What's that? Why are there more bad than good? Why are there more bad than good? Well, this covered everything. Nine covered everything. Uh, bad stuff. Nine won't cover all the bad stuff Staten cooked up. So we needed 17 of them there. This is the best list in the Bible. Jesus only had uh, 11 on his list. So then Paul expanded it and got them all in there. Fabulous. But you can see the root of it, can't you? When you're talking to somebody, it's coming out of, there's something wrong with their conscience is seared. They got no check and balance system. And chronic negative emotions, fear, depression, anxiety, chronic negative thoughts, obsessive compulsive thoughts. See that? Boom, 17. Bang. There they are. So I figured this would be a good reference tool for you when you're ministering mm -hmm. to others. Mm -hmm. Handy. Figure out where something's coming from. Right? Now when you have cases like hers, what's your name again? Terry. Terry. When you have cases like Terry, of course you refer them, always go to this chart. Okay, and I have a little packet in my office. I need to give you before you leave. I have a little packet in my office for the mentally ill patients. Okay, you put a little packet together. And of course, this is in the packet here from Hammond's book. See, so before she got schizophrenia, here she got, she had rejection and rebellion and fear and so, lust and so on. All these other spirits were already there and then they let in the schizophrenia demon, and then he took over the whole system. He's the manager now. He's the CEO. See? And schizophrenia demons can actually damage your brain physically. 
they'll they'll do a CAT scan on it and something. And say, oh boy, this this person's got, you know. Wow. Yeah, I was wondering about that. If mm -hmm. Neurologically, they could damage you. Oh, of course they can. Demons can damage your body. They give blindness, uh, disabilities, physical illnesses, disease. They they'll tear you up. They can damage anything. Okay. Once they get in, they start tearing you down, mentally or physically or emotionally. Mm -hmm. And they don't stop until you're dead. Right. And they're not going to leave until you force them out. They will not leave voluntarily. You've got to force them out. Well, I'm going to get a new attitude and I'm going to pray about it. That is not going to work. You got to force them out. You cannot keep sinning. Yeah. I just want to say one more thing uh, to affirm what you're saying that you have to force them out. Uh, I went on to get a bachelor's degree and a master's degree and became a professor just to try to prove to myself that I wasn't crazy. But um, even after that, they came and they they broke my back. I felt like two stabs in my back, and I was paralyzed for three months. It just felt like because I was rented a couple times too, but it just felt like like a, a spiritual like butcher knife or something. And I just felt two stabs, and then three days later, I went. My legs locked up, and I went to get X-rays, and they found uh, yeah lumbar spine L4. Yeah. Yeah. Now, what she's really saying, rewording everything she said. She walked out of the church and she stomped like that. Remember that? And then God, click, healed her brain. The damage that the demons had caused to her brain, healed. And that's what we're praying for for yes. your son. Okay. He's got brain damage. My baby. Yes. Brain. I'm with you. But these never came out. See, so today, hopefully she'll stay here and get the rest of these. Le you look on this chart here, and uh, I'm not sure, I don't know anything about her, so I, I don't want to say exactly what she has, but these other spirits that let him in, and he damaged her brain. He gave her brain damage, and God healed her brain. Like that. It was a sovereign act of grace. No, well, actually, no. Somebody was praying for her. So they prayed for her, and she got healed of her brain. She didn't get deliverance. Mm -hmm. Okay, that was supposed to come later. See? That's why they try to come back? So, hmm? That's why they try to come back, she said? Of course. They always try to come back. Mm -hmm. When you don't have schizophrenia, if you just have a lust demon, it tries to come back. Any demon that gets kicked out tries to come back. If you don't renew your mind, they will get back in. Right? Yeah, because Matthew 11 and Luke, uh, Luke, Matthew 12 and Luke 11 says that demons consider human beings houses. They're houses to live in. They're disembodied spirits. They want to live in your in a house, not poltergeist. Amityville, that's, those are other demons outside. The only ones that really damage you are the ones inside. They want to get inside your body and control your mind and control your emotions. See? And they will never leave once they get in unless they are forced out. And the only person who can get them out is... Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. That's right. So then to renew our minds, are you saying like unplug from social media, stop watching TV? Well, it's too late now. The demons are already in. But yeah, you, you can't keep feeding them if you can get away with that. But normally these kids are now, they've also got mind control spirits. And these demons are in their brain. And they, it's, now, it's now an obsessive compulsive mental disorder. They have to be on, where's my phone? And if you take that phone away, it's like taking a needle from a crack addict. They'll, they'll freak on you. Okay? So if you're sinning and you let in these spirits, if you stop sinning, 
you're not letting in any more spirits, but you didn't get the spirits out that already got in. So that's what we do here, try to get people to renew their mind and get the demons out that got in, and then stop letting others in yes. by renewing your mind. That's right? <laughs> that's the challenge. Yeah, the <laughs> that's the challenge. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, of course I know this is true, but it almost seems like an unwinnable war. It seems, well, at least to me anyways, it seems a little overwhelming. Now, did you hear what he just said? Yes, yes. What he's really saying to us is when I was young, all this stuff just seemed so hopeless. You know, and this got better, but that didn't. And I wanted that, and it didn't happen. And all these disappointments clicked in. Did you hear what he said? Yes. See? So, if I could get him to renew his mind here and remove that unbelief and doubt, he would never say that to me ever again, or anybody else for that matter. He would never do it again. Did you, see, did you hear what he said? It just seems. Did you hear those words? Those three words? Oh, they're huge. It just seems. I've heard that 2.3 million times in 40-something years of counseling. It just seems, no, when God's Word is on the table, it doesn't just seem, that's it. Period. And if I can get that person to go over here where God's Word is, it, nothing, no, it don't seem nothing anymore. This is reality. This is true. Don't give me that. It seems crap. Yes. I don't need it anymore. I got it. I'm a Bible thumper doormat. He's, uh, oh, did you hear that? Oh, boy, those spirits are coming out today. Did you hear what he said? Those, that's not him talking. That's something happened when he was little. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Um, yeah. Does it um, does it seem like when you're really um, saved and maybe really being serious with God, you know, you walk, it, does it seem like some of those demons seem to act up more and get more exposed? Like she was saying. Under no, they do it 100 percent of the time. Yeah. Now you just said something interesting. You said it seems. Yes. Did you notice you use that term "seems"? I, I did. Yes. Yeah. Now. If you look at these nine things here on that list, mm -hmm. if a person does not have these things consistently, there's no seams about it. They're, they're, they're not saved. It doesn't seem like they're not saved. They're not saved. See that? Now, if they are saved, and they do have these things, but they have all these other things, that's a Christian needs to be delivered. They're emotionally ill, they're physically ill, they're mentally ill, but they do have manifestations of the Holy Spirit here. Well, that's a deliverance issue. Once you get the spirits out, then these, these things will bloom like roses. See that? So they both use that term, seems. See that? As soon as you hear that word seems, that's a red flag. You got to find out what's beneath that. Say, what is beneath it? What's beneath it? How were you hurt? How? You. And how were you hurt when you were young? Rejection. From. Why'd she reject you? Um, she, she was rejected from her mom, very, very, very bad. Verbally? Um, yes, and also really abandoned. Abandoned, and your mother did what to you? So she had really thick walls, and she, had, she couldn't really nurture. She's very distant. What'd she do to you? Um, she's just very cold. Yeah. And you wanted the opposite. 
Yeah. What was her mother's name? Colleen. Colleen? So let's say Stephanie was working with you. Let's say Stephanie, that, she would remove that. Your, your mother's in there. And her mother needs to come out. Did you hear that? She would be a completely new person in about an hour and a half with Stephanie. Or, or somebody, yeah. Uh -huh. I Terry. have one more quick question. I would go to my friend's house and leave something there, and the demons would shake their bed at night. What now, was going on with that? Now, now uh, you can tell uh, Terry, how are you name? Terry. Terry's very intelligent. You notice that? Her IQ is like, poop. And uh, she's a co -later. And she's, she thinks all the time. She's a fast thinker. She's sitting over there, whole time up, up here, over an hour here. She's been following me, clicking and clicking and clicking. I've been watching her. And these demons that she has are, are worse than a normal person. And what they do is they are always uh, telling the person to tell somebody what they did to them. Have you been listening to Terry for the last hour? Mm -hmm. Am I the only one? <laughs> I don't think I am. She's always telling us what They did this, they did that, this happened to me, that happened to me, this happened to me, that happened to me, that, this and that, okay? So when you're counseling somebody, if the person starts telling you all, and they want to keep telling you over and over, all these bad things that happen to them, and it's essentially the spirits doing it to them, right? That's 100% her. They did that to her. They stabbed her in the back. They did this. They did that. It's a trick. If a spirit can get you to talk about what he's doing all the time, then he doesn't have to come out. Oh. He's stalling. Oh, wow. Whoa. Whoa. Wow. Right, Randy? He's stalling. It's a trick. So what I do is I let them, uh, you know, use a little Led Zeppelin on them. They ramble on. <laughs> but then at what this point here, I stop it. I don't need to hear. <laughs> what they did anymore. Now, I want to know what the Holy Ghost is going to do. Yeah. Come on. Come on. I want to know exactly what he's going to do. Yeah. That's what I want to watch. But if you let them keep going, if you let them keep going, Steph, yeah. they'll, they'll eat your whole hour, two hours up. They won't stop. And they're not trying to hurry it. It's not them doing it. The Spirit's doing it. He's stalling. He's outsmarting you. Why is that? Because they have this Spirit in them. Rejection. And most people don't listen to them. And they don't want to listen to them. Because they don't understand it all. They don't like it. It sounds kooky. It, it scares them. And so... The person never gets to sit down with anybody who will listen to them. And they just want somebody to love them and listen to them. Everybody's like that, right? Everybody wants somebody just to love them and listen. I tell my wife that all the time. I need you to love me and listen to me. <laughs> then I hear a click. Her computer pops on. Listen, I do. I sit there with them and I love them and I listen to them. And then I heard enough. Now, in Romania, you don't have that problem. 
<laughs> Romanians don't even talk. <laughs> you got to drag it out of a Romanian. <laughs> you feel anything? Do you have any emotions? And they clam up. <sighs> you know, I've actually had to physically assault some Romanians that have come in to see me. Is it a cultural? Yep. Yeah. It's cultural. It's awful. They are very quiet, uh, non sharing. How do you feel today? You have a lot of rage and anger? No. Mm -mm. Don't want to talk about it. That's nothing. They're really hard. But you're not, there's no Romanians here. Well, there's one here. There's no Romanians here, so you are all eligible to open your heart to the Spirit of the Lord and be healed. And be healed. Okay. Clamming up doesn't work with God. He, he, will not, he will not heal you. You got to confess it. You got to own up to it. Okay. Yes. So, in that arena, how, if, biblically speaking, how would one express their emotions? Because if, let's say, I have anger or sadness or grief or whatever, how does one express their emotions, referencing what you said in a recent teaching video? This person doesn't know how to express their emotions. But we also want to cast out anger, sadness, grief, frustrations. So okay, well, hold on there. Just stop right there. Now, uh, a person of themselves, human, hu humanly, has all these emotions. The demons have all of them, too. So the, the question is, you cannot cast anger out of a human because it's a God-given part of their soul. Anger is a good thing. Demonic anger that's been perverted is a bad thing. Love is a good thing, but a demonically perverted love is a bad thing. You're going to end up with six husbands and five divorces. On and on it goes. See that? So you can't cast out the human being out of the person. You don't want to. The, the, they would be a cyborg or, the, or they'd be institutionalized. You want the spirit exaggerating and exacerbating those emotions out so they can have a normal soul. I mean, if somebody came into your house and shot your dog or your kid, you would, you would be angry and well suited to be angry. That was a God-given trait to be angry. Okay? I don't like your dress. Oh, if you're fuming over they don't like your dress, wow, you got to go through deliverance now. <laughs> a dress is not a dog or a... F Are you with me? Yeah. That's demonic anger. You don't like my dress. My gosh, I got this from the Obama collection. <laughs> come out of there. Barack, come out. You can't cast the person out of themselves. Okay? So half of what she said was right, the other half was wrong. And it doesn't matter because she wasn't listening to me. <laughs> she doesn't listen to me. <laughs> In closing, are there any other questions? I have a question. Oh, Terry again. Uh oh. I was just wondering, like, uh -oh. desires. Are there such things as, like, evil desires? Because, I mean, it, like, are desires more than neutral, where, like, you can't cast out people's desires? Well, desires can you cast them out? No. Yes. Now, look. Normal desires are God-given, right? I desire food. I desire love. I desire uh, companionship. I desire this and this and that. that. Those are all good things that God gave you those things. Perverted desires, I want, I want ten wives. Uh, Joseph Smith, like I said, I could have ten. Uh, Muhammad had four. I want four. Perverted desires are based on the lust of the flesh, and demons pushing it. Yeah. 
So you can cast it out of the person. Well, you can't cast your flesh out of the person, but you can cast the spirits pushing it out of them. Okay. It could be a seared conscience where a person's mind likes rotten things. Okay, well, they got to repent of their sin, get saved, and renew their mind. Then you can cast those spirits out. Everything that's bad is not demons. Demons is, aren't everything. Some of it's flesh, some of it's poor training, some of it's childhood abuse, whatever it is. You can't cast a wounded soul out of somebody. You can cast wounds out of the soul, but not the soul out of them. If you did that, they'd die. That's a God-given soul. This is how God built you. Right? Right. You want your soul healed. You want your spirit empowered. You want your body healed. Right? You want your mind renewed. That's what you want. And you're, you, you're going to help people do that. You're, you're the minister, and you're the person that cares, and you love them, and you're going to help them. That's what you're going to do in your ministry. You're going to help people. Yeah, Pammy. Question. Will you please explain to new people here what renewing your mind exactly means? Because I well, that. well, that's a long Bible study, but the short version is positive. If God thinks something, then you think it. So I, in my opinion, it's this. In your opinion, it's that. What is God's opinion of it? What is it? Oh, I'm going to adopt that opinion. Okay. That's a second grade definition, of what, a description of what she just asked me. Uh, I'm going to think like Jesus does, does you know. Oh, Bob Larson years ago, what would Jesus do? <laughs> well, you got to think before you do something. So what he was really saying is, what would Jesus think? The mind of Christ. And that's your mind of Christ. What would he think? How does he see it? See? And then you can tell the sickness the person has. Okay? So, he's sick because he sees himself there. God, not even for a second, ever saw him like that. Right. Right. So, he thinks opposite of what Father thinks. Father likes him, he kind of has some doubts about himself. Dormatsville. Well, that, that isn't true, and that's not him. So if we could get him to come over to Father's side, well, we could kill that doormat and kick that thing out the door. Amen. We can't lose this thing. And that's rooted in rejection. Hmm? It's rooted in rejection? Yeah, childhood. Something happened in this childhood. He rejected himself. Self-rejection. Yeah. Um, so I work with, um, from third grade to eighth grade, a lot of children. I have seen in the talks that we have, I'm blessed to work as a teacher in a, in a faith-based school, Christian school. But there's still children whose parents don't believe and whatnot. But I have heard the rejection. And kids, as a teacher, do I have authority to... Not only no. pray for them, but maybe find spirits that of rejection? Or well, it not. that's a tough question, and it depends on what we're talking about here. But do you have authority to pray for them, is what you just asked me? A hundred percent. You've got authority, honey, to pray for anything you feel needs a prayer. Yeah. Period. Yeah. Whatever you decide is what God will go with. Can you cast demons out of kids in your class? <laughs> Probably not. You know, no. Because the kids didn't get the demons on their own. The parents or somebody loaded them in there. Can you bind their demons? Yeah, temporarily you could bind demons in another person. You can do that, yes. But you can't cast demons out of somebody who likes their demons. Right? I had a... A weird case, uh, I'll tell you a sanitized version of the story. Uh, 
honey, I plug your ears up. Uh, she and I used to attend a church, a prophetic church years ago. And the minister at this church was a good looking guy, pretty young, like in his 30s. Had a, had a nice, nice anointing for prophecy. Uh, great Bible teacher. Man, he, he could, he knew the word like you wouldn't even believe. And uh, the anointing at this little church was fantastic. This was, uh, well, I don't remember now, but anyway, uh, I had my prison and jail ministry back then. And I would travel all around the state going to these different prisons, casting demons out of these convicts. My wife and I used to have a ADOT card. Not from being criminals, but we got volunteer cards. Remember that? Yeah. She's trying to forget. And uh, this, this church was so anointed, I couldn't believe it. I would go there, and I used to use it as a filling station. I would just go there and get recharged and reloaded. And practically every Sunday night, I just got plowed down the hall by the Holy Ghost. I was on the floor. It was so fantastic. Praise God. And we went there a few times. And I started to get attacked with lust demons. Wow. And I started noticing a couple women in that church. I thought, man, those are, those are nice looking chicks. One of them was married. And I'm going, wait a minute, what? What is going on here? So, a year or so later, uh, a scandal breaks out. This pastor uh, was having an affair with a young girl in the church. She had two kids. She was about 10 or so years younger than him. And uh, his second wife left him. And then we found out his first wife, he cheated on her. She left. Then other rumors popped up that other people in the church were having affairs. I couldn't believe it, and then it broke. So the board got together and said, "Wow, we gotta, we gotta uh, shut this down. You gotta go into uh, rehab." You know, uh, we had left by then. As soon as I. As soon as that thing blew out, we said, man, you know, I need to, I need to leave. And uh, I was on TBN with the guy. He was a host one day and had me on, t I was on TBN, he interviewed me, you know, years ago. But anyway, the board tried to rehabilitate him. And halfway through it, he said, no. I'm not doing it. So all the preachers got upset, and everybody left. He then went right back to pastoring the church, built it up again a little bit, and then married another woman. Great Bible teacher. Wonderful spirit in that church. Great. A lot of good people in that church. People really liked it over there. He was a really nice person. Very likable guy. Had me speak over there once in a while. I, you know, have a teaching about what happened in the prison and some guy fell down and this guy jumped over a chair and this, this happened and that. And all the 
Everybody loved hearing the prison stories. Loved it. You know, if I ever get in a bad mood, I'll, I'll tell you those stories. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe next month. It was wild. Wild. Nothing came like here. This is nothing. I mean, these, these prison altar calls. Preach, you wouldn't have believed it. It was, I couldn't believe it. Couldn't believe my eyes. But anyway, that's a different story. Uh, what was the point I was making for telling that? I told that story I was making a point. You, got, you yourself got hit with lust demons, so you were getting attacked by the demons that were attacking him. Is that what you... Well, they were through the whole church. I found out later that we were all getting plastered by them. Uh, but I had a point I was going to make. How can I just, I just lost it. I was... No, that wasn't a point. What was the point I was making? The same thing happened again after he got married for the third time. I don't know. I, I bolted. No, I never. I, I had nothing to do with it. I was out of there. Speedy Gonzalez gone. <laughs> but I had a point I was making. Can't help somebody that wants to keep their demons. He wants to. Ah, thank you. Ah. Yeah. The Minnesota people came through for me. The Romanians have not been helping me. The Minnesota people. <laughs> All right. That's the point I was making. Say that again, sir. Say it again. Can't get somebody to deliver if they want to keep their demons. Yeah, thank you. That's why I told that story. <laughs> Oops. I just looked over here and I'm in trouble when I get home, so I'm going to have to get to the altar hall. Call here quick. You can't get, he didn't want to get delivered. He didn't want to stop that. He would not submit to rehabilitation, so to speak, with the other pastors. They wanted him to do things and learn things and go through therapy and there, you know how the pastoral restoration, it doesn't work, but I mean you got to go through the system. The guy needed to get his lust demons out, that's the only thing that would have saved that minister, okay? But he was a super man of God, just fantastic, and had a beautiful prophetic anointing. He would give some decent prophecies over there that Nailed somebody that was really, really great. He, he was something. Um, you know, I think he had a nice gift of healing too. But years ago, down at downtown at TBN over there on uh, McDowell and uh, you know East McDowell, yeah, Thirty Second Street McDowell, TBN. Uh, he would uh, he would go down there. He worked in the healing room. So he used to have a healing room down there. And he was one of the past ministers that came down and prayed for people. A lot of people get healed. Yeah, see, and so I told you this before, and I'll close with this. Uh, your anointing and your giftings have nothing to do with your integrity. So you could have a very anointed person who is, who's got low morals, conscience. Well, I think you were saying that it's okay to pray because she was talking about her students. Yeah, she's, she, she can... She can pray for anybody she wants to. Yeah. But you can't cast demons, like, that was my point. Yeah, was Thank you. Yeah. You can't cast demons out of somebody who wants to keep them. Yeah, Terry. Yeah. How did um, Paul cast that spirit of divination out of that? He was attacking her. Yeah. Oh. The demon was attacking Paul, and Paul punched his lights out. Self-defense. That's a different story. That's deep. I'm not talking, that has nothing to do with this. Oh, yeah. I'm talking about free will of a person. Okay. You cannot cast, well, you can't do anything with a person if they don't, if they want to keep, if they want to stay sick because they're getting benefits out of sickness, you can't, you can't force them to get healed. Yeah. I think that also is, does it have to do with her parent, the children's parents as well, the covering as a parent, so she can't get involved with like students and stuff like that? Does that have to do Well, no. Uh, well, I'm not sure, but the, her students, most of them are probably unsaved. Oh, yeah. So there's the only covering there is just more sin. Everybody's sinning, right? But uh, if, if she did, let's say that she uh, decided to become Sister Edder, which I hope will happen. Okay, I'm dropping hints here and I'm not getting any response. 
Okay, so she, and she just blows the demon out of the kid. The kid still has to go home to a demon-infested rat hole. Right. Wow. right. You follow me? Yeah. But what we do here is when we have our children's deliverance service, we, the parents bring them, and then we kind of sneak up on the parents during the service. <laughs> and like try to hijack them. Because that's how we're going to save the kid. Getting demons out of kids is easy. The parents are a problem. <laughs> They're tough. So are you putting them at risk if you deliver them and not the parents? Yeah, you're putting the kid at risk. So let's, if you, let's say she blows demons out of a kid and he goes home and dad's a warlock and his mother's a mm -hmm. prostitute. That kid could get worse. So we like to try and get the parents, nab them with the group. That's the best way to do it. Then you can't always do it. But if the kid is manifesting in class, she has the authority to bind the spirit. That's different from casting it out. She had, she okay? Yes. What happened? Yeah, just movement. Oh, okay. You can bind a demon or you can't cast it out. There's a difference between binding and loosing. They're two separate subjects, binding and loosing. You have the Greek word deo and luo. Deo, chain them up. Luo, unchain them. Deo, tie them up. Luo, untie them. Right? Yeah. Amen. Okay. Let's close in prayer. Father God, I had some great questions today, and I thank you for that. It's been a good session. And I pray that any person who looked at this list, the Holy Ghost list, these nine things are a representation of your character. Your character. And if anybody here today needs to be delivered from a spirit that's blocking any of these nine things from manifesting, I pray for someone here today who doesn't love. They like, but they don't truly love. I pray there today for their healing. I pray, Lord, for anyone here today who has temperance problems. They have trouble controlling their mind, their emotions, their behavior, their attitudes. I pray that spirit that pushes them to do that will be removed. I pray, Lord, that everyone here today who has deficits they know need to be healed, but they don't have the humility to come forward and be healed, I pray that you will forgive them and you will touch their hearts. I pray, Lord, each person here who lacks faith because it's being blocked by fear, doubt, and unbelief, I pray for their deliverance today. I pray for everyone here who has integrity problems. They're fantastic at church, but when they get home and they're alone or when they're under stress or they're being, going through trials, their character, their character waffles. I pray, Lord, for every person here who is lazy and has no endurance, long-suffering. And I pray, Lord, that you will heal every person here who doesn't have joy unspeakable and full of glory and the peace of God way down deep in their hearts, just like you said. Amen. Amen. I just prayed those nine characteristics of the incredible Son of God. Praise God. If you opened up the Son of God's heart, you'd see all nine of those flowing out of there like a river. That's Him. Huh? All right, now, let's have the ministry team come forward. Come on up here for me and help me here. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. All right, turn that light off. Turn that light off. Mm, thank you, Jesus. 
Give you praise, Lord. All right, now, if you fell into one of them categories, you've got a, a deficit in one of those nine. You're going to come up here right now and let us pray for you. You're going to come up right now, and you're going to let us pray for you. You're going to come up right now. You're going to come up right now and let us pray for you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, dear Lord. Thank you, sweetheart. I'm glad you did that. Thank you. Close your eyes. Add a girl. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, dear Lord. God wants you well. God wants you well. God wants you well. What if we have the night? Yeah, there we go. Coming up, coming out already. There it comes. God wants you well. There's a rack of hurts in here, a rack of them. And they are going to leave today like you won't believe. This one, all this pain, everybody criticizing her, running her down, not accepting her, not listening to her. Right now, spirit of rejection, you in the name of Jesus are coming out in the name, there they go. You, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I command you to come out, your spirit of rejection. Right now, go. Come on out of there quickly, right now. Move out quickly. Quickly come out of that body right now. Yeah, there he is. Let's go. Come out of there right now. Come out in Jesus' holy name. Uh, come out in Jesus' name. Come out right now. Thus saith the Lord. Now listen, those two ladies next to you, you know them? Yeah, they're very hurt people. They don't have anybody to help them. And they're too afraid to come for help. You see him sitting there? Am I right? Yes. Am I right? Yes, you are right. Yeah. So, guess who's supposed to help? <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. There it is, right there. Let those wounds out. There it comes. Let your tears go. Come on now. Let your tears go. Come on, sweetie. There it is right there. Come on now. Father God, I have your servant here. She's supposed to be helping others. She's not supposed to have spirits and moons and negative thoughts and impatience. She's not supposed to have that. Come out, spirit. Come out right now. Come out. There he is right there. Come out right now. Come out right now. Come out right now. Come out, right now. Come out of there. Satan, loose your hold. Loose your hold of the woman of God. Let go of her healing gift. Stop blocking her healing gift. Stop it. Come out. Come out. Come out right now. Come out. Satan, loose your hold. Come out of there. Come on, that body right now. Quickly. Every negative word spoken against you or criticized. Oh. Uh, this guy needs to be going over his childhood wounds. Come out of that body right now. No, you don't stop. Take a breath and blow. Satan, come out. Satan, come out. Come out of here. Come out right now. Come out. Go in Jesus' mighty name. Go in Jesus' name. Come out. Come out of that body right now. Come out. Get out of body right now. 
Mind control, come out of my head. There it is. There it goes. Come out of that brain. Mind control. Out of that body. Out of that body right now. Say to Lucia, oh. Get out of that body right now. Hurry up. Come out. Satan, come out. Hold that. Hold that. Come out, there. Hold that. Come out right now. Satan, go. Get out of there. Come out, you rotten devil. Come out, everybody. Go now. Go now. Come out now. Come out, everybody, right now. Hurry up. Satan, lose your hold. What's the name of? Uh, can you ex tell me the name of the person you said that is like a female deliverance person? Edder, Edda, Edder. Your oh, sister Edder? Yeah. 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 Mary Wordworth Edder. Oh, I want to know about her. The most anointed human ever in America. At the top. How, how do you spell her name? E T T E R. Sorry, Mary. Not from this country. Mary. Oh. E T T O. Because I want to search. Uh, yeah, there's a couple of things that I don't know. Like they mentioned that happened here. Like I think it was the revival that happened before or something like that. I can search it up.